Hey everybody, Michael Park here for CreativeCow.net. Now since Thanksgiving is just around the corner, I thought it'd be a good time to share with you a technique for creating a cool transition using Trap Code Particular 2.0. Now we're going to be here working inside After Effects and I've already brought in five images. The first three are some leaf elements which we'll be using for the particle textures and the second two are simply some uh, images of myself and my family. This is me and, my t and two of my girls in a pile of leaves and this is th my three girls in a pumpkin patch which I thought were pretty indicative of Thanksgiving stuff so we're going to use those to transition between. The first thing we want to do is prepare our images and what I'm going to do is take the image of my kids in the pumpkin patch drop it into a new composition because I want to add some text so what I'm going to do is just add some text here maybe uh, happy Thanksgiving And as you can see, we've got kind of a pumpkin-y orange look here, and it kind of blends in with the background, not real legible as is. Let's go ahead and change that. Let's go up here to Layer, Layer Styles, and let's simply add a bevel and emboss, which will create a little highlight on the top and a little bit of shadow underneath. And if you get, want to get really creative, you can see that the light's coming in here from the right-hand side. So come down here to your bevel and emboss settings, and you can change the direction uh, of these highlights and shadows a little bit if you want to by adjusting the angle and we can simply twirl this around to kind of match the same look as the pumpkins in the scene so you got the highlight on the right and the shadows on the left however you can see it still blends in a little bit too much so let's go ahead and add layer layer styles drop shadow which will create some shadowing beneath this and really make the text stand out from the background that's really all I'm going to do for this, for the text here. So let's go ahead and close that back up. The next thing you want to do is to create a final composition and put our two layers in it. So from the menu, let's choose Composition, New Composition. I'm going to call this Final Comp. And I'm going to be working at kind of a half of a 720p resolution, which is 640 by 360. That's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is your typical high def aspect ratio for broadcast and TV. I'm going to be working at a frame rate of 25 frames per second with a duration of about 7 seconds. And that's fine. Let's go ahead and add our Thanksgiving pre-comp in, which will be the background layer, which we're going to transition to, and our Thanksgiving two layer which will be the top layer we're going to be transitioning from so we'll put that on top let's go ahead and hit s to scale this down to fit the composition a little bit better and maybe move it down a little bit like so and let's solo the bottom layer and put this into position by scaling it down as well and dropping it down there we go so now we have our images where we want them the next thing we need to do is to create our transition. Now to do this I'm going to grab these three maple leaf elements. I'm going to select them and drop them into the create new composition tab. Now this will bring up a dialog box here that says new composition from selection. We want to choose single composition instead of multiple compositions. We want all these layers in the same comp. We want to use the dimensions from maple leaf 01 which is our largest file which is 500 pixels by 523 or something like that. The other two are smaller, they're 500 by 500, and I want the still duration to be only one frame long. We also want to sequence the layers so that uh, each layer will be on its own individual frame so that uh, we can use that for particular later on and we can click OK. Now if you come in here in the timeline you can see that the layers work fine but they're a little offset with our timing. We're working at a composition frame rate if you see here of 25 frames per second but when we brought these layers in it used a base 30 or 30 frames per second so it made the layers a little bit shorter. Now obviously with three layers that's not a big deal but if you're using multiple layers you know 20 or 30 layers of leaves for this composition that's going to create a problem. Here's an easy way to fix that if you run across that. With the layers selected, let's hit Alt Home to bring all our layers to the beginning of our timeline here where our time indicator is. And as you can see, these layers don't quite go all the way to one frame. That's no problem. With our time indicator still on frame zero, let's just hit Alt in bracket and that will create just one frame of each of these layers. Now all we need to do is right click and choose Keyframe Assistant Sequence Layers. Once again, we don't need any overlap and click OK and now we are in business. 
So if you run into that problem, that's an easy way to fix that. Okay, let's hop back into our final comp. And let's drop our maple leaf pre-comp in, and we don't really need to see this. We can simply turn it off. Now, before we go any further, it's probably a good thing to do a little bit of housekeeping since we're starting to get a bunch of different pre-comps and stuff. So let's go ahead and rename this maple leaf comp to leaf comp source, and maybe pre-comp source. There we go. And let's also take this and call this Thanksgiving pre-comp. And let's create a new folder, call this pre-comps. Grab our leaf pre-comp and pop that in there, and our Thanksgiving pre-comp and pop that in there. And now let's create a new solid layer by choosing Layer New Solid or hitting Control Y. We'll call this Particular Leaves. Making sure it's comp size, the color doesn't matter, and click OK. And to this, let's add Effect Trap Code Particular. Now the very first thing I want to do is animate the particular emitter going from the left side over here to the right, which is how we want this to transition. Kind of like a diagonal transition with the leaves falling through our frame. So let's go ahead and take care of that. We need to figure out where we want these leaves to come across, and I'm thinking somewhere between 2 and 4 seconds. So let's go ahead down to 2 seconds. We'll grab the position x, y and set a keyframe by left clicking. And then let's move that up and off of our composition far enough so that when the leaves come on and as big as they're going to be, they don't pop on anywhere where we can see them inside our composition. I think that's far enough up and away. Let's scrub down in the timeline to four seconds and simply move this emitter position over until it goes off of our frame. And that's fine. And if we scrub through the timeline, I think that works just perfectly. The next thing I want to do is to change the particle type from the default sphere to a textured polygon. And the reason why we're going to use textured polygon is, in particular 2.0, a textured polygon is actually a 3D layer, which means we can rotate it around in 3D space to give us the look of like real 3D leaves falling. Uh, in prior versions of, of particular, you only had the custom particle type, which really only faced the camera, it stayed oriented towards the camera, so it didn't give you quite the same 3D look that the new texture polygon does. We need to pick our texture, so let's choose Layer, Leaf Precomp Source. It's going to give you a warning that says the layer size is really big, 500 by 523. This is not a big deal unless you're using a ton of particles, so simply disregard it and click OK. Now let's scrub down here to the end of the timeline. We don't really see any leaves yet, and that's for two reasons. Number one, the leaves are extremely small. They're only a size 5 so far. And also, there's really nothing pulling them down through our composition. Let's take care of both of those right now. Let's increase the leaf size to maybe about 50. And let's increase the size random up to oh, about 50 as well. So now we've got the default size of 50 pixels by pixels. And then size random, which will make them 50% bigger or 50% smaller than the size we choose here. And that's just to create, you know, some random look to the leaves. The next thing we want to do is make sure these leaves fall through our frame. So let's comb down here to the physics setting and let's increase the gravity until we get the look that we want. Now if we start dialing this gravity up, you know what I forgot? I forgot the time sampling. Right now we have the current frame and that's not, or current time, that's not going to work for us. We need to come down here and choose a random still frame. And what this will do is pick a random still frame from our pre-comp source, however long that is. And since ours is three frames, we have three images to pick from. But if you had, you know, 30 frames or 30 images, you'd have 30 frames to pick from. And that way we get uh, a random leaf being spit out for each particle. Since we only have three leaves, we're still going to have a little bit of uh, redundancy, but you know what? I think it'll work out in the end. So let's come down here to the gravity. I think this is a bit too much gravity. We want just kind of a nice line that goes sideways coming down across, and that works pretty well. But as you can see, they're still all oriented towards the camera, and that's not what we want at all. We want these to rotate around and be true 3D layers. Let's come up here to the rotation dialog box and twirl that down. And let's increase the random rotation to 100%. So now you can see that all the leaves have adjusted and they're all rotated all differently, which looks pretty good. But 
they don't have any rotation as they fall through our frame. They just stay in the initial orientation they were. And we want to give a little more excitement or interest to this scene. So let's go ahead down here to the random speed rotate and turn that up to about two. Now what will happen is as these leaves fall through our frame, they're actually going to rotate around a little bit and make it look like uh, they're a little more natural. Speaking of making things look a little more natural, let's go down here to the physics again and twirl down the air physics. And we want to add just a little bit of drift or spin to these particles so they don't fall straight down. And the way we can do that is by increasing the spin. So let's turn down the, or adjust the spin amplitude and increase that up a little bit to maybe about 30 pixels or so. And now as we come through, you can see the leaves are kind of tumbling and spinning and drifting a little bit, so they're not just coming straight down. Now if we come back here to the very beginning, you can see that we have leaves encroaching on our scene. And that's for two reasons. Uh, number one, perhaps we don't have these leaves quite far enough off screen here, and we can change that. Or we might have a little too much velocity for our leaves, and the velocity is kicking these leaves out every which way, sideways, up, down, back, left, and right, so we can twirl that down maybe to about 60, uh, which will group our particles a little bit closer and also make sure they don't come into our scene. And if we scrub through the timeline here, you can see we get a nice kind of uh, thick stream of particles coming across. And we can also adjust the position of our emitter so that it's a little more off screen. So with the layer selected, hit U to reveal any of the keyframes that we have. And let's snap to our initial keyframe for our initial position. And what we can do is simply drag this a little farther over so it's a little further off screen. And similarly, come down here to the very end and drag this over a little bit more so that uh, we don't have any problem with leaves coming into our composition before they should. All right, so we got our leaves. Uh, one thing you need to note is we got a little bit of spacing between these leaves. And uh, I don't want that because I want this to be a pretty thick bunch of leaves coming through here so we don't see the transition between the front image and the back image. Let's increase the particles per second up to about 150 just to add some more leaves in there to give us a little thicker uh, look and I think that will work much better. We can also add even li a little bit more visual interest by adding some turbulence in. So we can come down here and choose effect position, bring that up a little bit, and now the leaves will kind of jostle back and forth and make it look like there's a little bit of wind blowing which I think adds to the, the visual interest and the look of our scene. Now this is looking pretty good, but um, it still looks a little flat. All these layers are all the same color, and that's not what we want. So let's go ahead and exploit another new feature of Particular 2.0, which is the ability of the particles to dynamically interact with lighting. In order to do this, we need a light. So let's choose Layer, New, Light, and we're going to create a new point light. It's going to be just slightly warm, to kind of match the look of the overall scene. And let's click OK. And uh, we popped it into our scene, but nothing really has happened yet. And that's because we need to come down to our particle layer here, twirl down to the shading settings, and turn the shading from off to on. Now instantly you can see our lights react with the light. Now it's a little harsh here. You got some really dark shadows and some really, really bright leaves. Let's adjust the position of the light by hitting P and we can bring that back a little bit so that it lights everything a little more evenly. But now everything's a little too dark. Well, let's change that by going back to our shading settings and turning up our nominal distance or the distance from the light to the leaf uh, where the light's going to affect those leaves. And you can see that we get a little more of uh, a wider kind of net of the light cast over our, our leaves here so that more of them are affected, but we still have some pretty dark leaves. So let's pull the position of our light back even further and then increase the diffuse of our leaves until we get kind of a nice even lighting that we're after. Now it's time to go ahead and transition between our two images. So let's grab the top image here and choose Effect, Transition, Linear Wipe. Now what we want to do is kind of line the wipe angle up with the angle of our leaves here. And let's increase the transition completion, so make sure that it lines up properly. Maybe adjust it just a little more this way. Okay, and let's feather this out you know, quite a bit so that uh, if you can see through to the background, it really doesn't you know, catch your attention as a really stark line there. 
And let's come back here to where the leaves just start coming on frame, which is about right here. And what we're going to do is set a keyframe for the transition completion by left clicking the stopwatch and turning that back all the way to zero. And then let's scrub through the timeline till the leaves come and hit the bottom right hand corner, about here, and turn the transition completion up to 100%. Now if we scrub through the timeline you can see the leaves come across and transition between one layer and the other. As you can see we got a little bit too quick with our transition so let's simply select the layer and hit U, bring it down a little bit so that transition lines up a little easier and I think that looks great. As a final note if you want to add a little bit of motion blur to your particles falling through you can simply select the layer turn on motion blur and then turn on motion blur for the entire comp and this will add motion blur to your leaves if you think this is a little overcooked or too much motion blur you might not really be able to see the leaves too much you can actually come in here to particular twirl down to the rendering settings and the motion blur settings and change this from comp settings to on and what this will do is use a custom shutter angle for this layer only and if you think that's a little too much blur you can dial that back maybe to about uh, 240 or so which will decrease the amount of blur but still blur it out a little bit to give the illusion of motion and there you have it a cool transition very fall very festive looking for your next holiday project now i hope you enjoyed this tutorial learned a little bit more about after effects in particular if you have any questions please post them in the comment section i'll be sure to try to go over there and answer as many as i can you can also find me hosting the trap code forum here at creativecow.net i welcome any comments or if you just simply want to drop me a line and say hello. As always, thanks for watching. Best wishes here this holiday season, and until next time, this is Michael Park for creativecow.net.